today we're making what's called the crosshead. So, in a previous video, we finished making this bottom cylinder head, and now the top end of the engine is starting to really come together. You see how you have the piston rod that goes in and out. Um, the crosshead will screw into the piston rod, and it will be a um, it will be a cylinder that's captured, or it'll be a yeah, a cylinder that's captured in a in another cylinder, kind of like the piston is up here. So, the reason for that is um, uh, what's going to happen is you have this part that goes in and out, and then the crosshead is kind of like this fork. Let me show you the drawing. Here's the drawing. So it kind of looks like that. That part right there is threaded, and this a pin will go through here that will connect the um, that will connect the connecting rod, and that's where the connecting rod will articulate. Now, uh, there's really not that much room here. I'm gonna have to mill a relief here so the connecting rod can swing. That's something I didn't put in the drawing, um, but I should be able to do that. So. Uh, now, we're going to start with just a piece of cast iron stock, and we'll go from there. You, you guys see how it all screws on and stuff uh, when we are done. So I just have a piece of cast iron stock in here. Um, kind of the order of operations are we're going to uh, we're gonna machine this outer part. If you look, we're going to machine this part first, the cylindrical part, and then the actual shaft that goes through it, we're going to machine that separately and uh, press fit it in. So, we're starting with this. Let's face this off. Three quarter. Yeah, that's that's plenty. So what's our diameter that we're at right now? We're at two inch, five hundred eighty thou. We need to go down to two and a quarter. So I'm just going to turn this down, and I'll bring you back. We're just going to put a center in this. Uh, so I could take some heavier cuts, and we're going to need to drill it out anyway, so a center is going to work. This machine isn't the most rigid, so having a center helps a lot. There we go, no more chatter. Should be the last pass. Okay, that's two over. Two over. I think I'm just gonna gonna reverse the feed. Yeah. 
Okay. So now let's see where we ended up. I wanted two under. So in other words, 248. 248 and a half. 248. 248. I want this to be a really tight fit. And I think this will do the job. Yeah. Cool. Now we're going to uh, drill a hole in it. shaft to press fit in <clears throat> we need to bore out the uh, this bigger bore right here this recess it's gonna go in 400,000 so we're gonna touch off <laughs> okay so have a dial indicator set up we're gonna go in Point thousands. One, two, three, four. Set my zero. Okay. This dimension isn't super critical, but it's got to be an eighth of an inch. So I'm just going to use calipers. If I really wanted to be precise, I would bust out the telescoping gauges. So we got about, let's see here, five, one, two, 35 thou left. 20. 30, 5 down. There we go. Okay, so now, uh, we gotta part this thing off. Alright, let's part this off. Man, that's chattery. Let's slow this way down. flipped around in the chuck and this isn't a critical measurement but this is about let's see 35 need like 85 thou off the front <laughs> Here. 
This should be the last one. Let's just take a measurement. Perfect. Let's get rid of that. Break that edge. Okay, so we're at the horizontal mill. And I got this set up here. I just uh, I set up this plate back here on the side of the table so we can have a flat to butt up against. I put a bolt through and just clamped it onto this plate. And then um, I uh, put a, uh, just to use a V block here, bolted down to kind of stop it from rolling that way. Um, because that's kind of the way our forces are going, or, or that way. And uh, I just put some parallels under it because um, I don't know why I did that. I guess I guess the table's flat enough, but I was going over this gap, and I just wanted to make sure. I don't know. It's probably fine, but at any rate, we are going to uh, touch off on the front of the work. Let me just plug the machine in. Okay. So we are going to feed in, where are we here, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, we have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. All right, so that's three quarters in. That's how deep we're gonna go. And uh, let's just touch off on the top. Okay. So it's screaming at me, but um, I think that's because I'm sticking out so long here. Uh, I could try to slow it down, but what am I in right now? I slowed it down a little bit. So I'm just going to keep going until uh, I get down to size, so I'll bring it back. So this is how I'm measuring. Just taking my uh, depth mic, putting it on the flat. So we're at one inch 925. Uh, we got to get to one and a half. So we got 425 thousandths to go. So we got a couple more passes.
That's a problem. So, this is actually not a problem. I thought it was because it was a little alarming and I wasn't expecting it, but um, <clears throat> we have to actually mill out this center part anyway on this on this section here. So uh, having the hole really makes that, having the reamed hole in there really makes this easy because most of it is already gone. So uh, this is down to size. We're going to have to take this out and flip it over and then we're going to do the other side. Alright, I'm not sure how well you can see this but um, <clears throat> I got these two V-blocks on their side and uh, the flat part we just milled is resting on it and then the front part is on this so it's perfectly squared up um, <clears throat> now we're just going to do the same thing I'm just going to mill off three quarters and uh, I'll bring you back when we're done I'm going to do that off camera because you know I don't want to don't want to bore you guys Yeah, we didn't make it through. Well, we'll take a measurement of this. Yep, one thou over. So, uh, we're pretty good on the measurements. Everything is good. But, uh, for whatever reason, we broke through on the other side. This must be pretty thin. So, let me take this out and we'll see what it looks like. Yeah, look at that. It's pretty much nothing. So next we need to set it up and just mill off this little bit in the middle. And then this section will be done and then we need to make the shaft that goes through the middle that we will press fit. Alright, I got kind of a wacky setup here. Uh, we got two toe clamps holding down the flat parts and then we have this guy up against the front um, the only guy, the only things holding them, this thing down, are the toe clamps because we need to have, we need to be able to put this, have the end mill go through the center. So uh, now we're gonna get this to, you know, the approximate height here. So this mill is a lever style mill for the knee. Meaning, if when I want to move the knee, uh, I have to pull a lever, and it kind of sucks because there's it's just not as nice as a as a knob. Okay, it's, if you don't push up on the stop at the same time, it can push the work down. So we're gonna see how well this goes. So I'm just going to do that until everything is cleaned up. I'll bring it back. So there it is. Uh, we still need to drill the hole that goes through this for the, um, the small end of the connecting rod to pin through. But we're getting there.